Hi there, my name's Jane Anderson and this is the Jane Anderson Brand You Show. It's the podcast for experts who want to have greater impact, influence and income for their businesses and careers. As experts, we know that people buy from people and work with people who they know, who they like and who they trust. So I'm so glad you're here because it's that time again now to really amplify how you show up in the world. Welcome to the Jane Anderson Brand You Show. I am so pleased you've been able to make it today. And uh, today I'm going to talk about something that I come across a lot and and that is people who are thinking about leaving their jobs to start their own businesses. And, you know, it's a big risk. And so certainly in line with, with something that I'm passionate about is building your business under your And um, uh, today is really about thinking about some of the things you really need to to consider when you do that. So, it, and it was about, it was earlier this year and I went to an event, I went to see Gabby uh, Bernstein speak and uh, so I live in Brisbane in, in Queensland, Australia and I'm a huge fan of, of Gabby. I think she's done an extraordinary job um, in, in what she's doing and if you haven't seen her, you might like to to jump online and jump on her Facebook and Instagram and things. And um and uh it was really interesting. There was probably around I think there was probably around two between two hundred and two hundred and fifty women there in the audience, a couple of blokes. <laughs> um but mostly mostly young women and they're mostly millennials, I would say. It was a couple that were a little bit older, probably more a few uh, Gen Xs, but mostly millennials, which is certainly her audience. And um what was really interesting was that about two um, two thirds of them who had got up to ask questions because she does a lot of talking, but she also does a lot of listening and ask and lets people ask questions, which is great. But the question that every single I would say, well, probably yeah, around two thirds of those who got up to ask questions asked them about how to make a break from their jobs into their own businesses. Now. I don't know if you follow Gabby, but she's she's a spiritualist. She does a lot on um, meditation. She uh, subscribes to you know Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson and and um, uh, Wayne Dyer and all those types of that sort of genre, I suppose. And so I just found it really interesting that the questions that were being asked were all about how do I go into my own business? And I, I thought for millennials that's quite interesting. So in 2013 and 2013, 2014, um, I co-authored a book with um, the lovely Charlie Caruso and uh, Stacey Ashley and another, one, uh, another well-known author here in Australia, Bernard Salt, who's a demographer, and uh, the book was called Understanding Why. And the chapter that, that I wrote, it's available on Wiley. It's called Understanding Why, and uh, and it's specifically targeted toward, towards understanding millennials. And I'm a, I'm a Gen Y right on the borderline of, of, um, of millennials. So, and... Um, but what I found when uh, when I work with millennials, particularly in terms of, of career management, um, uh, you know, their purpose, they have a strong sense of purpose and, and personal identity and, and drive and mission. And I wrote about it in the in the book and how that shows up in careers. And but what I, going back to Gabby, I guess what I thought was really interesting was I thought that she might have got asked other questions around um purpose and relationships or um the other uh, more spiritual content and it was all about how do i leave my job which was really interesting and um so some of the comments that they were making were those at the event said that they you know they they felt disengaged in their work it didn't link to their higher purpose um and what they wanted to be remembered for and a number of i found a number of them said you know is this all there is is this what life's all about and a lot of questioning and um so one of the things i probably find if you're a millennial and you're thinking about doing this and you don't have to be but um Something that you might be starting to think about is your own corporation, you and your own business having your name 
as the business. So yourname.com and social media is providing the vehicle to, to launch careers and businesses are under your name because people people connect with people as we know from um from the book impact i've written so and i think that real corporation you is you could not get a higher higher uh, form of self-expression if you tried <laughs> your business under your name.com you're not hiding anything you're not standing behind a service or or a, a product or anything like that or you are at the forefront you are what sells your thinking your approach um your purpose is what people buy and you know i had a a a client who contacted me this week who said you know i'm thinking about putting an ad in a magazine she came from a retail business but she does business coaching she said should i put this ad in the magazine and i I said well you've put the ad in for for you know the the products you've sold in the past but remember that people aren't buying products anymore they're buying you they're buying your thinking so it's actually your content and and your your uh you're actually probably better off to write a blog a a post or an article for the magazine the ads ads for products don't work the same as corporation you people want to connect with you and so we know that the career advisory board which is in the u.s and they've stated that by 2020, 50% of the U.S. War- workforce will be self-employed. Now, this is what it currently looks like in India at the moment, which is, you know, if you and if you look at the way that um, India works, you know, you look at the sheer volume of people who are on Odesk and Elance and um, uh, all those sites that I can go on and get help from someone in India. In India so they're all freelancers. And... Um, so I guess the, the impact for that is that Australia tends to follow suit. We're generally not that far behind. Uh, years ago we used to be a bit behind the US, but we're, we're catching up. So, you know, the impact for that means that if you look at some of the other authors that are out there that are writing about how to how to go about this, you know, even if you look at um, Mark Burris's book, Mark Burris has got his, his podcast on iTunes, um, Mark Boris. For those who, if you're not sure who he is, um, he is a bit like, um, say, the Donald Trump of the US. So Donald Trump had a Celebrity Apprentice and The Apprentice. So Mark Boris was was uh, was the uh, uh, the person hosting uh, The Apprentice here in Australia, and also did Celebrity Apprentice. He's been known for setting up a uh, Yellow Brick Road. Um, a financial services company but he wrote a book recently and he said it's called what it takes which is about setting up your own business and he says that there are no secrets to business success and both he and Rupert Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch's 82 years old they both work 12 to 14 hours a day he says that what it does take is hard work commitment and purpose so this is really a lot of this is about purpose and this is what I was seeing at, at Gabby's event and this is definitely what what I see with clients and so if you're thinking about stepping out from your career or from your corporate career if you want to be a, a corporate refugee as as Annalee um, uh, Blundell called them on uh, one of our other podcasts you know it's really starting to think about your, that real strong sense of yourself and who you are it's not just and it's not just a self-worth thing you know it's not about your not just your self-esteem and yes you've got a very strong self-esteem to be able to do it but it's also it's understanding of yourself your mission your strengths your own identity and if you look at some of the work, I mentioned it in the Understanding Why, but if, if you look at the work that um, Professor uh, Jeffrey Arnett has done, Professor Arnett um, wrote a book uh, particularly around the identity of, of people and when we start to form that st- really strong sense of self and we don't really form that until our 30s. You know, he says that even though we're classed as an adult, his book is called Emerging Adulthood, and even though we're classed legally as an adult at 18, we actually don't really get a strong sense of who we are until we're in our 30s. And so that's why one of the things I believe is that, and I'd say this is for a lot of um, a lot of people, not necessarily everybody, but if you ha- don't have a natural entrepreneurial side to you or streak, uh, you know, 10 years in the workforce will be good for you because it really builds your sense of identity and purpose um, before you go out on your own. Um, but I thought what is worth commenting on is that 
uh, in the book Understanding Why that I contributed to, around 40, 46% of Gen Y said that they want to leave and have their own business, but 90% don't, and it's because of one reason, and that's a fear of failure. And so estimates are that one in three new small businesses in Australia fail in their first year of operation. Two out of four by the end of the second year and three out of four by the fifth year. So certainly fear's holding us back because of, you've only got to look at the statistics. Um, but there, I think I really think that there are a few things that you can do to counteract all this. And uh, so whether you're thinking about becoming a, a personal trainer or a coach or a blogger or an, uh, you're having your own accounting firm or an insurance broker or a kinesiologist. Um, if you're thinking about leaving corporate life and going and setting up yourname.com and doing this, um, I think there are really probably five things you need to think about. And I think the first one is you really got to know your purpose and the business that you're in. Because if you're wanting to have your own business just because you want more, you're not feeling like, oh, is this all there is, and you want more meaning in your life, then you're not quite ready, I believe. If you're ready, you'll know because you're ready to bring more meaning to others, not to you. You've already got it. Now it's about time to give it to others. So your business is not about you. And yes, it is in some ways, but your business is about how you solve other people's problems. Mark Boris tells the story about when he first met um, Kerry Packer in his book and he asked him what type of business he's in and he laughed because he thought, well, because this is when Kerry was about to acquire a portion of it for $50 million. He thought, geez, <laughs> I think you want to know something. I think you should know what you're buying. And he just sort of laughed and thought he already knew that, that the business he was selling, was it was a home loans business. And uh, it was called Wizard Home Loans back then. And Kerry, and, uh, Kerry Packer had said to him, no, you don't. You're in the business of building hopes and dreams for Aussie families. So I think you really want to think about what business you're in. I remember reading an article, I'm trying to remember her name, the lady who um, who set up Model Co and a whole bunch of, um, a range of products that are, um, you know, tanning products and makeup and, and lashes and all this stuff. And she said, I thought I was going into, into um, the beauty business, but I was going into the retail business. I had to learn about merchandising. I had to like about, learn about margins. I had to learn about volume um, and really how to sell the stuff. <laughs> so just be, just know your purpose and the business that you're in. So your business is not about you. It's about how you solve your customers' problems. Um, I think the other thing you really, I'm very big on risk mitigation and when I'm working with clients, I'm, I'm, I'm very mindful of the risks and that not everybody has the skills to run a business. So I do skills gap assessments and things like that. But um, one of the ways that you can test things and um, before you, you know, one of the biggest things I, uh, that makes my, makes me nervous is when someone says, I've quit my job and um, I'm ready to start my business. And I, I get very, very nervous. I get, um, my heart starts to race a bit. And, uh, and so one of the things that I, uh, that I get really uh, clear on with clients is if I can see that they're not quite ready is is about thinking about how you build it on the side because if you're leaving a full-time job and you've got a salary and you've got rent or mortgages and all your bills to pay if you don't have savings um, in a safety net and if things go wrong then that's going to create extraordinary pressure I once had a client who came to me who said, I need to set up this business and I cannot afford to make mista any mistakes. This has got to work. And the reality is, is that there's a lot of testing, there's a lot of trying, and there's a lot of being prepared to fail some things and move on fast. There are no guarantees. Um, so some of the ways that you can do that, I think if you want to set up your website, definitely get your LinkedIn going. Um and start getting feedback from customers and just really get the ball rolling so that you've got a 
got good insight into into what's happening. Um, it can take longer to get momentum than you might think. So even take on a part-time job perhaps. You know, you might work four days a week so that you've got an extra day to work on your business or something like that. Um, I had a client who uh, years ago was a milliner and uh, so she made hats for the Melbourne Cup each year. Now, she had a website and all those types of things, um, but she was also an admin officer in a business and she worked part-time doing that. We call these kind of portfolio careers or some people call them slashes. Slashes where they have one one job and and uh, and do another. And But she didn't want to give up the ad- administration job because she really liked the people that she worked with. But she had this creative outlet that she couldn't necessarily harness or do anything with while she was in that job. So she managed to negotiate and get it back to four days a week. And she did her millinery business one day a week. So she started to just build up her, she had an asset base of skills, abilities and tasks that she could do. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you don't actually even need to leave your job at all. So in her case, she was she's quite happy with that. She It creates, um, uh, for her personality type, you know, there are some personality types where security is very important to them and the stress of having a full-time job, uh, a full-time business is just too much. But you may have some outlet that you have in you that you want to unleash. So um, maybe you don't need to leave your business after all. Um, I think one of the other things you might need to think about is this is this whole um, concept of this 10,000 hours and I so I think um, this one is the next one is really about make mistakes while you have an income and you know when you have your own business people are paying for expert help so while you're within a business the best thing about that is that you get to build your what Malcolm Gladwell calls in his book Blink your 10,000 hours. So your 10,000 hours, you don't want to be building your 10,000 hours while you're in a business. That would not be ideal at all. Um, and to build your 10,000 hours, you have to be able to make mistakes and you have to have been able to done, do things wrong because when it comes to people paying for you for your expertise, you need experience, you need foresight, you need to be able to identify the consequences of certain actions being taken or not being taken. So um, you really need to come to your business having done it. So, for example, um, if you're thinking about starting a coaching business and you've never coached before, then you need to really start those skills while you're in paid employment and become known for your coaching skills um, because that will start to build your networks and, and your your personal brand. Um, so you and you might be going, well, I don't ha- I'm not in learning and development. I'm I'm in finance. And that's okay. So that doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that you start to integrate these skills into your job where you can. And it will really help you get the mastery of those before stepping out to try and master a business and new skills at the same time, which is way too stressful and then that's a failure. So when you, the the key here is that when you make mistakes in a business, you still get paid. (laughs) So, but what you want to do is know how to manage and anticipate these risks before you go into a business and suddenly get hit with things that you've never seen before or know how to manage. So that one's make mistakes while you still have an income. And I think the next one is, I think one of the best things that you could do is start to build your blog and a newsletter list. You know, the the most valuable asset that you will have in your business is your customer base and you really need to to, um, help them to get to know, like and trust you. And um, so the key here is it, once you've been bl- posting your blog and, and sending it out to your list regularly, so ideally it's going out at least if, if, at least monthly, but ideally I would say kind of fortnightly is good, um, to get traction, you might have to go weekly and um, and that might be for the first year or something. But it, it can just be – you need to be um, pretty cons- – the key is consistency. Um uh, but you want to start doing this while you're in your job and then you can start working with, with some clients around work hours. So when I started my business, I had a full-time job and I saw my clients on Monday nights, Thursday nights and Saturday mornings. 
and uh, and I still held down a full time job. So yes, I was working insane hours. Um, but if you're really committed and that's really what you want, then that's definitely the safest way to do it. And um, and it'll just help you get established, make mistakes, get a feel. I think one of the biggest challenges is getting to know your own business. And once you get to know it and how it's working, uh, then you've still got a job at the end of the day. Just be very mindful of your headspace in each of those spaces. So when you're at work, you're at work. And that will be something that will start. You'll notice it will start to slow your own business down. And that will be starting to when you're starting to feel ready that you're ready to leave because you've got enough clients coming. Um, so just to recap on that, so the most valuable asset base that you will have is your customer base and you will need to let them get to know, like, and trust you that you know what you're doing. Um, and I think the last one is something I see this with transitioners a lot. The the point here is sell, sell, sell. (laughs) I see so many transitioners, career transitioners who want to make that leap out. Um, and uh you know they think that when you're going to go out on your own it's going to give you more time to focus on your craft as time to think again because <laughs> if you can't sell you have no business whatsoever so you know if you look at your calendar in your corporate job right now if you look at what you're doing you just get to hone in on your craft you're not worrying about paying bills for the company you're not working out where sales are coming from you may not necessarily have all these other things going on unless you're at a really senior executive level and that is your job but i think i see people where they go oh you know it'll be great that I can go out and focus on my craft the reality is is when you get out there you spend a lot less time on your craft um you have to be it's a real challenge to keep your craft in your calendar for the week and you spend a lot more time doing business development and uh so clients just don't magically appear they don't just turn up it's not just a a case of build it and they will come you need to find out where the people are who are going to buy this and how are you going to sell it to them and get in front of them um so um but you know if you need a a sales mentor or a lead generation you know you might want to lead uh read my book on personal branding for the connection economy um i'm also in the process of finalizing and co-authoring my uh, this this next book which is called connect how to leverage your linkedin profile for networking business growth and lead generation so if you need help with selling that's lead generation which is being able to get in front of people but then you also need to be able to close your sale so um uh and you know if you're if for those that you're getting in front of ideally close rates um it should be a bit higher than one to four so for every four meetings if you're only closing one um that's a pretty tough slog so that means something's not quite right so if you're trying to work out how do i know then that's probably good a good benchmark so out of today's podcast i think if you think your job is hard (laughs) having a business is even tougher um i spoke with a client this morning who said you know i think since starting my business i have experienced every single emotion possible (laughs) i just didn't think it would be this hard and there are so many times that i thought i would give up uh you know the long hours the deadlines being able to juggle home and work particularly if you've got kids there's no it department that's just going to turn up and to your desk and fix your computer um you have to do your own basses your own tax you know unless you're getting people to come in and do that and then you still got to pay them and maybe you're not paying yourself maybe you haven't even paid yourself super yet um you've got to chase people to pay their bills you've got to manage your own website and plus you've got to network you've got to write your blogs you've got to get all this business coming in there's so much to it um however yes it is a giant leap it is very it can be very very lonely because if you're doing your own thing it's just you however it can be extremely rewarding if you're on purpose the key here is around being on purpose so being on purpose for yourself uh, but the purpose of your business around how do you do this for others and that when you clear on what you're doing to help others and what problems you solve and uh, once you got that and you know what you're in for then uh, that's a great way to start a business so love to know your thoughts um, um uh, feel free to 
jump on my LinkedIn page. I've got posts there and, and you're welcome to put those up, uh, put any comments. And um, uh, But, of course, um, jump on the Facebook page. Love to hear your comments there and uh, feel free to connect with me on any of those. So have a fantastic rest of your day and uh, look forward. Let me know. Share your business. Show us what you've set up and we'd love to see it. All right.